People claim this model is better than VO3 and cling to for video and it does native 1080p. In AI, things change fast. New models launch, rankings shift, and what's cutting edge today can be old news in a few weeks. Right now, Halo AI 02 is sitting at number two in the world ahead of Google's VO3, according to Artificial Analysis Video Arena. And today, we're gonna see what it can really do and why so many people are voting for its results. AI. So this leaderboard, right, is an open online benchmark where users compare AI generated video side by side without knowing which model made them right. So each vote changes the model's position on, on the leaderboard. So over time, the ranking shows which model people prefer the most. So you get like one video here and one video there. You don't see which model uses them and you just have to vote anonymously. So right now, Halo is just behind C-Dance and beating Google's VO3. So that rating is based on thousands of real votes from actual people and you can go there and vote, vote too if you wanna. But before we get into that, Halo's latest feature lets you have a start frame and an end frame. Basically, you can decide exactly how your clip begins and how it ends. It's it's not complicated. The, the feature's been around for quite some time in various tools. For example, I generated this image of a man sitting in a, well, what I believe is some kind of a sci-fi spaceship interior. And then we uh, changed the frame to have him look at the camera. His hands are up and he's kind of, I don't know if he's screaming in fear or he's just trying to surprise someone or something. He's afraid, maybe possibly, or just very excited. You just uh, give it an image with the first frame and the last frame, and the model then fills in the motion between them, right? And uh, here is the result of that. Let me know what you think. Just essentially, like I said, it fills in the gaps, right? And if you're using AI video for anything in terms of client work, these are the kind of tools and the features that you would be using, right? Because you need to have control. So if you want to test this yourself, you got to log in, Links in the description. And if you go to video generation here and use the text to video model for our testing first here, then we'll just add a prompt. We're selecting a length and the quality of your generation. And we are clicking this uh, magic button. Just have some fun here. Try out a few prompts and see how this can perform. We got a high resolution video up to 10 seconds at uh, 720 and six seconds at 1080. So I'm assuming a lot of people want to get 1080 these days. So getting six seconds there is pretty, pretty decent, pretty decent. I mean, yes, you can always optimize later, but you want to get it native big, right? So in this example here, we have a lone fisherman in a small boat who's going to face a giant sea serpent. And I think, honestly, this is really cool. You really get that feeling of something lurking dangerously. It's, uh, it's coming right at you. Uh, the water and waves, you know, feels feels really nice. But one issue is in, in all videos, when you get kind of characters at this certain length, you know, you have the, the problem with face consistency. But in a scene like this, I think it's fine. I would be fairly happy with the result like this. Yes, you know, you could render a, or generate a few more times. But overall, first in, pretty good. In our second example here, we, we have two astronauts in, in zero gravity so we wanted to spin and i really like this one look at the consistency of the character as they spin so the, even the hands stay together and honestly that, that's pretty good usually like hands and fingers they tend to like warp together right uh, so that's pretty good and, and those items floating around you can see that you know well, i don't know what that is a bag or something just looks really nice and it adds an amazing touch to to, to the scene now is the spin perfect? Well, I don't know how spins work in zero gravity. We've only seen how it works in movies. But either way, very dramatic. Five out of five Ikeas. And in our third example here, we have a long symmetrical carter. And yes, again, remember we talked about like whenever characters are like further away, you, there will be some slight jankiness to the face. And I think that's one thing that we're going to see improvements on over time with these new models. But apart from that, once she gets closer, that's really good. But and the overall scene looks like out of a film, 
The reflections on the posters on the wall here looks amazing. The lighting is pretty inconsistent to a film look too, so obviously it's a nice shot. Would you want to go in and, and fix the face if this was a real movie? Yeah, probably. But apart from that, really nice. And again, like look at the reflections on the posters. Nice. Let's try something else. We have a wide dashboard POV inside a luxury car, city skyline. And let's do this at uh, night. Yeah. Sunglasses at night. That was a, was a Corey Hart something. I don't know. It was a good song though. Great song. So uh, this is a pretty cool output. And I really like what they're doing with um, uh, what they're doing. Well, with the random generations we got from the, the UI. In, on the screens here inside of the car. That's pretty cool. So these examples, they were all text to video. And I feel that whenever you're doing text to video, overall, you're getting great results because you're just letting the, the AI model just run with it and be amazing. You know, now, if you're doing image to video, it's going to be much harder because you're forcing an image in and it has to kind of use that whether it kind of was trained on that sort of image or, or motion. So Let's test that. I have a few images I'll put in with the prompts and I'll show you the prompts for each. It's going to be somewhere on the screen. So uh, let's test out some motion. How will the characters stay consistent? And like if it just holds up when it starts moving, right? So that's usually an, an issue. So the, some will be more technical, others more for fun. But let's see what this model can do, right? And it's going to take about 80 credits here for a 1080p uh, generation of six seconds. So in this image, we're going to want to have this character like sprinting through this market scene and just looking at the image, like you're getting like speed blur on the sides and everything already. So it's probably going to understand that this is an action scene. So overall, I would say the motion is pretty good. Like you get the feeling of that action and it's quick, right? So that's nice. The downside to that, obviously, like everything is moving so quickly that the model is kind of starting to warp a little bit. I think this is an issue with all the models. Once you like really get it, get it up to speed, the faces and, and you know, like the, the body parts kind of mash together. So while it's a cool result, you would probably have to generate a few times if you're doing like a real movie or something, right? Albeit pretty cool. In this next example here, it's what you see the prompt, but it's a woman with long brown hair. Neil sets the bag down and kind of lays flat on her back in the sunlight. We have a push out, pedestal up, tilt down. So we're going to get a lot of camera movement out of that too. So we're clicking here and selecting some 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 movements. And for this one, uh, um, you know, it's pretty good. The lighting on her hair is pretty nice. It's very dreamy scene overall. It's a pretty cool shot. And that light coming in from the window is, is really nice. And in this third example here, we had I have an image like this. It was li lying around on my desktop, so I figured why not? And I don't know what I was expecting. This really changed the vibe from that kind of nostalgia 70s, 80s film thing and just turned into a superhero. It feels playful and you get that superhero energy with the drones or I don't know, magic or feels like drones and then you get that chase camera and that's it's pretty nice and in this example here we're having um let's see camera movement let's do this pan around shot of the subject and well the camera movement is pretty good here so this character is, is walking through the desert like it's no big deal the motion is fairly steady and you know the background just stretches out nicely over there. I always love like environments. So if I'm doing like a painting tutorial or something, I will always do like big environments. It's nice to get kind of that depth, just the space of it all. So how would you rate all of these, right? We got a few, like we had the, the space one. We gave that five out of five Ikea's. So that was pretty good. Overall, like whenever we did the text to video and the 1080p ones, I mean, they were looking great. Remember the fisherman? That was really nice. I did like the corridor. That was nice too. We didn't have to do a lot of generations for this. We're getting pretty good results straight out, right? The image to video, well, you, there were a few more generations overall while testing. Text to video was easier. Image to video is where you have most control. But if you just keep generating a few times, it's going to look pretty nice. But I'm pretty impressed by what the new Minimax Halo 
oh, two mall can do. Some shots still have the minor quirks, but for the range that we tested, the results are really good. For five bucks, five, that's this many, you get 500 credits, which is enough for trying out a few prompts at 1080p. And I, I think new users get 200 credits when signing up. So you can just use it, test it, and uh, whatever, right? So let me know if you used it, if you like it. Uh, if not, if you, if you do want to use it, there's a link in the description to try it out. Uh, until then, I'll be somewhere in zero gravity teaching astronauts how to dance. See ya!